one of my friends in Mumbai, a Gujarati gentleman, he purchased a very expensive, high-end, upmarket car, a slick, posh, yellow Lamborghini. You know, cars are expensive in Mumbai, things can get expensive than that. If you have watched this Hindi movie, Diwar, Amitabh Bachchan and Shashi Kapoor, Amitabh Bachchan talking to Shashi Kapoor, Mere paas gaadi hai, Mere paas bangla hai, Mere paas paisa hai, Mere paas nokar hai, Tere paas kya hai? Mere paas ma hai. The dialogue today has changed, ladies and gentlemen. Amitabh says, Mere paas Lamborghini hai, Mere paas Jaguar hai, Mere paas Bentley hai, Mere paas BMW hai, Mere paas Rolls Royce hai, Tere paas kya hai? Shashi Kapoor says, Mere paas parking space hai. more expensive than car. <laughs> this friend of mine, Gujarati, purchased a yellow Lamborghini and called me up, saying, would you like to bless my car? <laughs> now in India, everything is blessed. Babies, marriages, job contracts, all this stuff gets blessed. So would you like to bless my car? We'll go for an inaugural drive with you. I said, well, it's a Lamborghini. When will Swamis get to bless Lamborghinis? <laughs> <laughs> the gentleman drove to our temple in the Lamborghini and he said, we'll go on a 15 minutes drive. I sat in the passenger seat. The gentleman sat in the driver's seat, obviously. He was driving. I was the first one. He didn't even have his wife drive first. <laughs> Choose your career wisely, you know? <laughs> The car pointed at a traffic light at Pedder Road, and there was some car standing there. I can't even remember what model. I'm sitting in a Lamborghini. I'm sitting there, and this gentleman in the next car, he turned his head around, and his eyes were like big. Never in the streets and the roads of Mumbai had he seen a slick yellow Lamborghini. And his eyes went even bigger when he saw me sitting inside. <laughs> You should have seen the expressions on his face. He was like, Swamiji, Abhi? <laughs> I wanted to pull the windscreen down and say, man, this is not my car. I'm the blessing man. 15 minutes blessing drive and it's done. The 15 minutes drive had turned into 35 minutes. I suggested to the gentleman, I think I need to get back because there's a very important meeting that I need to attend. Ladies and gentlemen, what this man did, when I just suggested I need to get back, shocked me to the core. I believe most of you would be shocked to the core when I tell you what he did. This guy broke down crying like a baby. I don't think any of you would cry the first day when you have possession of a slick yellow Lamborghini and are driving it for the first time. And these were tears of anguish. How do you know what tears they are? When tears are poured, they are tears of joy. When tears are warm, they are tears of pain and anguish. Check it out next time. But if someone's crying, don't take a thermometer. <laughs> don't test with others, you can test it for yourself. You know? I asked him what had happened. This man, with great difficulty, spoke up and said, just three days back, my wife has filed papers for divorce. He was driving a car, fancy car. He loved his wife, his children loved his wife. For some reason, the wife had the papers for divorce. And this fancy Lamborghini, expensive high end car, couldn't wipe his tears. This fancy, expensive, plush car couldn't bring him any hope. And I, while I was driving with him, I was thinking to myself, God, look at this gentleman. With all of the achievements that he has, a first class business, incredible amounts of money, Tremendous influence and affluence. And with all of that he had, and the cherry on top of the cake was a Lamborghini. <laughs> but, no. Ladies and gentlemen, therefore I say, if you truly want to know how rich you are, then count all those things that you have that money cannot buy. Hope, love, respect, dignity, character, integrity, acceptance, but wealth is a very broad term. 
money is not wealth. Money is just a part of wealth. And you must have it, obviously. All of you are looking forward to having money, and you must obviously have it, but it's just a part of wealth. 2nd of February, 2005. I was lying in a monastery, in our ashram, on the wooden floor, exhausted, tired from the anxiety last night. And suddenly a fellow monk, one of my friends, came up to me and woke me up, saying, he's leaving. He's leaving. I got up, gathering myself together, rushing to go to the room where my dear friend, Stoka Krishna Das, was leaving his body. Memories were flashing through my mind as I was rushing towards this room. He was a monk with me, had stayed together, we stayed together. At a certain point, he had decided to move on and get married. He went out, he had taken a job in the hospital we run, the Bhakti Vedanta Hospital, as the librarian. He had just gotten married, his wife was pregnant. And while the wife was pregnant, he was diagnosed with melanoma cancer. <laughs> He decided that he wanted to leave the body in the monastery where he spent most of his time. We had brought him to our monastery. As this memory flashed in my mind and I was rushing there, I remembered every day I went to sing God's names to him on the harmonium. My tearful eyes, as I cried, seeing a dear friend struggling with melanoma cancer, every single time I looked at him, my vision was blurred because it was someone so dear. Yet, this gentleman was amazing. He had a beaming face. All the excruciating pain that he went through hadn't affected his determined resolve. You look at his face. Look at that smile. No morphine was working on him. I realized this stuff works. His wife had given birth to a baby girl. They brought the baby girl to right next to him. It was the last time she would see him. It was the last time his wife would ever be with him. Ladies and gentlemen, as I walked to the room, my guru, Radhanath Swami, the author of the popular book, The Journey Home, was right next to him, giving him hope. I was astounded. Inside the little room, there were so many people. I was standing right next to him with my guru, Radhanath Swami. Outside were 450 members of our community, all together chanting the names of God. What I saw here was a man who didn't have a Lamborghini. What I saw here was support. What I saw here was people. People who were there to financially support him. People who were there to medically support him. People who were there to spiritually support him. People who were there to emotionally support him. I was amazed at the kind of support this man had given. You know one thing? When you're born, people love you. And when you die, people love you. In between, you have to manage. <laughs> <laughs> and this man had managed truly really well. He had invested so much in relationships with his people that when he was in dire need, people had come to him. Ladies and gentlemen, yes, it is important for us to have support. Wealth doesn't just mean money. Wealth means money plus people and support. One gentleman said, do you know what's the difference between complete and finished? He said, if you find the right partner, you're complete. If you find the wrong partner, you're finished. <laughs> but if you find the right one catching you with the wrong one, you're completely finished. <laughs> Partners, we definitely need friends, we definitely need professional therapists, we definitely need people who can support us. And therefore I say if you want to talk truly how rich you are, drop a tear and see how many hands come forth to wipe that tear. That's how rich you actually are. That's right. Sanskrit is an amazing language. Sanskrit is an amazing language. If you want to call uh, uh, someone a donkey in Sanskrit, you say Vaishakananda. <laughs> <laughs> you want to know what you call ice cream in Sanskrit? Dukdha, Sharkara, Yukta, Hima, Ganagola, Gattu. 
Yes, there was a gentleman here in this country, Chennai, Mr. Palam Kanyan Sundaram, giving away each of his salary to educate the poor. He was recognized by the United States, given an award of about 5 million American dollars, approximately 30 crore Indian rupees. He gave away all of that money to educate the poor. How many of you are ready to be candles? Contact me later, I need a lot. <laughs> To be honest, we cannot be that extreme. Selfless candles. And just because we can't be candles, should we continue being ice creams? No. Journey means move from being the ice cream to a candle. But how many of you like to look beautiful? How many of you like to look handsome? Those who are not raising their hand, they think they are already beautiful. <laughs> I must tell you. A teacher came to a classroom and wrote on the whiteboard, I am beautiful. Which tense is it? The students said past tense man. <laughs> Physical beauty does go away. One of my friends, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to introduce to a, to a very handsome guy. One of my friends, Prem Maheja, wonderful man. One in a well to do high middle class family. This man, his accountant's daughter, stood first in the KEM Medical College and wanted to go to the United States to study and didn't, didn't have any money, didn't have a sponsor for the visa, sponsored her visa, paid for her tuition fee, paid for the travel fees, all of his staff, paid for the fees for all of the children of his staff, paid for the house of every single staff member, paid for the marriages of every single person in his staff's family. And what's amazing is no one ever even knew. And there's so many such people across the country and across the world who are trying to move from being an ice cream to be a candle. Ladies and gentlemen, if you truly want to know how handsome you are, just extend your hand to some and you will definitely be considered to be extremely handsome. It's not about the looks which fail, but it's definitely about how we help others. It is important for us that wealth is equal to money plus people plus a purpose in life to serve, share and contribute. It was the 9th of July, 2009. I had just returned from England, London. As I got back from London, it was half one in the morning. For some reason, my telephone was on, cellular phone. My phone rang. My mind started going into guesses. Who could it be? My mom had rung me up as I picked up the phone. I didn't want to hear the news that my father had gone. He was down with Parkinson's. Just before I had traveled to London, I had gone and seen him. He was bedridden. From all the way as I had become a monk till now, it had been an amazing journey for them. Hard in the beginning, yet very appreciated. My dad had gone. I drove from Mumbai. It was pouring cats and dogs. The cremation was done. The next day I went to the crematorium. And what came in my hands was a pot. A pot of ashes. As I held this pot of ashes in my hands, I was stunned, shocked. I couldn't think for a while. And this is 2009. I took this life as a monk in 1996 after having worked with Hewlett Packard. And as I was now there, I'm wondering, is this my father? Is this what's left out of my father? 
God on would have spoken, read, heard, and spoken in so many different forums, including the British Parliament. Had dawned upon me suddenly in that one moment. That's all gone. I'll tell you something. It's quite amazing how the sobering moments are. They bring to your heart those important priorities which truly matter to you. Ladies and gentlemen, we all have to evaluate what is of importance to us. What are we going to hold? Grudges? Anger? What? When we go, we need to leave a legacy behind. And not just leave a legacy behind. When we go, we must carry something along with us. On my way to London, on a flight for the I was I had a mango milkshake bottle with me at the lunch pack. And at the x-ray machine, as the mango milkshake passed through it, the security fellow said, Sir, you can't go to this. I said, why? He said, it's liquid. He said, it's liquid, it's sublime. He said, what's sublime? He said, it's a mango milkshake, sir. One liter of steel bottle. I said, sorry, sir. He can go to this with it. So I said, I'll take it, but I won't take it. I won't take it. So I found someone, I have someone who I know at the airport. He took me out, he gave it to the beggar. Came back. And I said, boarded the flight. Sir, what's your name? I said, sir, what's your name? I said, sir, what's your name? I said, sir, what's your name? I put on my laptop. This one part. When you board a flight, you must know what you can take along. <coughs> Everything else is left behind. You know? And similarly, when the flight ends, you have to know what you can take along. And therefore, I must say that there is a need for a divine spiritual connection. Yes, when the flight ends, there's three things we must do. Not have anything in our mind left. Second, we leave a legacy behind. And three, we have something to carry on, even if it's 100 ml, <laughs> but it will be allowed with us as we move on. And thus I say, what makes life complete? Wealth makes life complete. Be super wealthy. Have a lot of money. No problem. Be super wealthy. Have a lot of support. Be super wealthy. Have a lot of purpose to move from an ice cream to a candle and chair. And be super wealthy by leaving a legacy behind on having something that you can carry with all of you as the flight lands. Ladies and gentlemen, I must thank all of you for your kind attention. Thank you very much.